What's up, YouTube? I am back with another video. Uh, and I noticed last time there was a big response to my stock photography video, trying to give an introduction actually to a friend of mine, not necessarily to all of YouTube, but uh, I thought that I would give a quick update because a lot of stuff has changed in the past few months from my workflow then into my workflow now. And I thought I would take a few minutes just to explain uh, what is, the biggest differences are so far. Um, I don't do I don't search for keywords the same way I did when I, that I explained in that video anymore. I use the Shutterstock keyword tool, and at this point I will place right here a preview of what the Shutterstock keyword tool looks like because it's really useful. And I actually use that to combine concepts. If I have an image that doesn't really represent well what if it doesn't represent a certain category that well, I can actually use that to combine concepts. Um, and it's, that's really useful. So I no longer recommend searching for images individually and copying keywords, but rather using the Shutterstock basic keyword tool. Uh, really useful. There's, always, there's also um, available online a database from Yuri Akuas, who is the most, uh, the most successful stock photographer in the world, apparently. Uh, he also has a keywording tool, which I think just uses uh, some sort of interface to collect keywords from uh, keyword tools like Shutterstock, but across websites, I haven't seen much use for that or a particular advantage to that, but Shutterstock seems to work just fine. There were also questions about how much I make from this each month, and that question is a little hard to answer because if I averaged it out, it would probably be at this point, after about six months of working, um, $300 a month. So over the last three months, maybe it would be about $300. The first two months I made uh, 25 cents and then a dollar respectively. So when you first start out in stock photography, you are going to probably be hugely disappointed if you're doing it based on money. I was doing it based on money and just having fun. Uh, I was just curious about the, the whole stock photography thing. Um, you also, are going to see that it that it fluctuates strongly based on which month it is. I noticed that December for me was far more profitable than uh, what's a what's a bad month. Uh, February wasn't that great. Um, last February, February 2017 wasn't that great. Uh, but it does it fluctuates a lot. But if you average it out, I guess at this point, at 250 to 300 dollars a month, which is uh, just at the the price of my rent, it's progressing pretty impressively to be honest uh, i'm working a lot and i think in the beginning it's not it doesn't seem like it's worth all of the work but after a while it starts to build up and then for example when the exams came around last semester i didn't work for two weeks or so and in those two weeks i was still actually uh no it was far longer than two weeks i, I didn't work for about a whole month um and that entire month i was still making money and that is the kind of freedom that stock photography will allow you as a student, which is why I also think that, that stock photography is something really uh, lucrative and practical for students because I can just go out on the weekends, which is what I do. I go out on Thursdays before my lectures, and then I go out on, on Saturdays, uh, and I just take photos all day. And then I come home, and on Sundays, I edit all the photos. And recently, since this semester started for, about, for a few weeks now, it's been about 50 to 100 images per weekend. And you can also see after each week what kind of impact 100 images on your portfolio makes. Um, because it does, it, it makes a visible impact and, it, and it, it, does, it builds up slowly but surely and pretty reliably as well. Uh, if you're a student wanting to do stock photography but maybe don't enjoy most uh, shooting portraits, which I don't, I have. I have I have friends that are willing to do portraits and I've shot portraits with them, but in general, <laughs> Germans are, <laughs> my, my foreign friends, my Asian friends are very open to having their picture taken and sold professionally. Um, Germans are pretty skeptical when it comes to signing a contract about photos because it's important as a photographer that you don't, tell them in a suspicious way or tell them in a way that doesn't really reflect the nature of what you're doing. Um, you have to explain to them that when they sign that contract, um, their portraits could maybe 
in the worst case scenario be used for some sort of political campaign for a party that they don't support. Um, we, we jokingly talk about how their pictures could be used in pornography or something, but that's, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, although I've, I, I can't guarantee it, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's more likely to happen that they won't like is something like a, a political party representing themselves with their picture. So I, I, I prefer going out and just walking to certain destinations around Stuttgart here. Um, Stuttgart's a pretty big city. Um, maybe not based on population, but there are a lot of there are a lot of sites to see in Stuttgart and a lot of places to visit. And I basically just take the train to a certain stop and then I walk for maybe two or three hours to this destination. And on the way, I just take pictures of things that catch my interest. And what do you know, these objects and images have commercial use. And it's almost just, it's almost just based on probability and coincidence. But that for me is the most fun and I like working that way and um, I will continue to do so but I recommend doing that if you are a student and you just want to earn real money in your free time with stock photography without having to work full time during the week or oh, hopefully I hope you're not working full time during the week if you're a student. Um, you don't have to work part time during the week, you can work a little bit on the weekends. Um, on the weekends now I probably work about eight hours, um, eight to 10 hours. Uh, usually I can get all 50 to 100 photos developed or edited in one day, but sometimes it goes over a day and a half. Um, and that will also take practice. Editing the photos in a, in a, in a stock photography kind of way and not, a, not an artistic way uh, requires getting used to and, and you'll, you'll learn how to how to make the some cheap uh, cheap sun flares that are really popular in stock photography. Um, you'll learn how to sharpen your images um, for stock photography. Uh, it's really not about the artistic concept that could take a while, um, which I do. Which is not to say that I don't do artistic imagery. Um, I do genuinely enjoy photography just as itself, uh, an sich. Um, and yeah, I, I sometimes take images in a batch of 100 that I really like, and I'll, I'll take a little bit longer to edit those, but those I'll put on my personal portfolio, and those I'll sell on platforms like Etsy, which is new for me right now, but I'm sure I'll have an update about that in the future. Uh, buildings and people when you need a property release or a model release. Um, and it depends, honestly. Some buildings, not talking about people, but some buildings uh, are just so recognizable in their shape that you can't sell that image. It, it might not even have a logo in it, but some, yeah, some buildings inside of them, if you're inside of a university, it depends on where you're taking images or where you're making images that you might need to properly release, but that's also something that you just have to get used to. And it's not consistent across platforms. Uh, property releases are necessary on some platforms and on others not. It seems to me, for example, on Dreams Time that almost all of my images are accepted, which for the Dreams Time company could be a bad idea, I guess. Um, on Shutterstock, they're, they're very, um, on Shutterstock, they're very, uh, gründlich. What is it? What is that word? Uh, they go into detail often. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, anyways, but you understand, I hope. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, I really appreciated the positive feedback. I, when, I, when I took that last video, I was worried that my presentation would be a problem, and it was for some people, but I the majority of people found it very helpful and they found the feedback uh, they found the the honest feedback pretty pretty uh, useful and I'm glad that helped and please feel free to leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section asking any questions you might have about stock photography because it seems like I can't predict what kind of questions people have uh, some of the questions that I saw were pretty random uh, and sometimes interested friends uh, ask me questions and sometimes I get comments so I'll make sure to try and keep 
up to date with your comments and honest with you because that last video um, in retrospect had some things that don't apply now uh, but for the most part it was hopefully helpful oh and one last thing uh, if you do like these stock photography videos uh, and you would like to start doing stock photography yourself you can help me not ruin my own market by signing up under my referral links that I have listed in the description below uh, the referrals are really surprising um, I have had so many referrals on dreams time based on that last video and if you sign up based on, on my referral, you can uh, help me make my dreams in, in China come true. So uh, please don't forget to do that. And thank you for watching.